the open hour. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Welcome. Come on into the room. Come on in. We still have people joining. Come on into the room. Giving everybody a minute to do that as they're transitioning from uh, that opening session. That was a magnificent opening session with the New Deal for Youth. I hope you all got as much out of that as I did. Um, so excited to see the young people just motivated and in the trenches and making demands and raising their voices. They definitely not only have a seat at the table, but they're running that table, okay? Um, so this is just a, a, another opportunity coming into this session today to continue that work and learn about in a very effective model for community engagement and advocacy. Um, we got, we're gonna hear from the street captains today. I am truly, truly, truly excited. So again, I'm just giving people a little time to come on into the room. But hello everyone and welcome to day one of the Young Minds Matter Conference. My name is Nzinga Khaled. I'm your moderator for today's session and shortly, we will begin Street Captains, a model for community engagement and advocacy. All right. Looks like we've got a couple more people coming on in the room. So for now, let's get to know each other a little bit. I want to know who's in the room. So if everybody could drop in the chat, where are you joining us from? Where are you joining us from? So there should be a chat button uh, on your Hoover app, if that's where you've joined from. And if you are there, see, I got it up on my phone too at the same time. I've already dropped a link in the chat for you to go ahead and be able to sign in to this session. Um, we want to make sure that we know who's here and, you know, give credit where credit is due and thank yous where thank yous are due. So go ahead and click that link that I've placed in the chat. We got a raised hand. I'm going to ask you to unmute yourself and I, I can hopefully answer your question, Jennifer. Hey, Nzinga, when I tried to join this through the Whova app, it wouldn't let me. And so I'm in Zoom and Zoom is not giving me the option of having a chat. Oh, okay. So can you, okay. Well, I will say that I, for some reason, could not uh, get in through Whova too. I don't know if you can see that quite on, on the screen. I'm trying to get it close. Um, it didn't start on Hoover like it normally does. So thank God we have this backup of Zoom and we're still here via that Zoom link. But if you look uh, right below, you still will see a chat button. Even though we can't see the video, there's a, a Hoover chat button. Can you at least access that, Jennifer? I'm curious. I or cannot. Maybe, is anybody cannot. else having this issue or is this just a one-off for me? I can't find the chat button either. Okay, can't find the chat. And are you also coming in through Zoom, Susan? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Well, technology is happening, y'all, and we're going to definitely roll with it. I will, so far, I mean, from looking at my phone, I can't even see Jennifer in the session. So I don't know who's, let me look over here once to see if I can see our participants today. We do have quite a few people uh, in this session today. And what I'm going to have to do is email you all. If we could take, if I could get my Zoom shot, I mean my Zoom tech to take a screenshot or notate all of the attendees uh, that are joining us. It looks like there are 19 people and probably more coming in shortly uh, who they are so that I can uh, 
email we can email out the sign in sheet as well as the uh CEU form. So some of you might be here today and needing CEUs uh from the conference. We will get those links in the in um or you might see them again today in a later session because it's the same link. But at any rate, we'll email it to you. You'll be able to get us your information so that we can get you uh, the CEUs that you need for attending as well as be able to evaluate this session. So we evaluate in the session, not the glitches of technology, okay? But let us know. That way we can give that feedback to Hoover as well. But, yep, I had the same problem. It looks like uh, we have 20 people on. Cami? Uh, hi, Zinga. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, sorry for the technical issues. There was just an issue with setting up the or linking this Zoom link to the session on Whova. Um, so I believe, um, I think presenters, uh, moderators, Zoom tech, you all can stay on the Zoom link. But for participants, if you all want to interact through the chat, um, you're welcome to log off this Zoom link. Um, and then uh, access the session through Whova. Um, I've updated the link, so it should be able to, you know, kind of seamless, seamlessly um, move you from or uh, let you access this session through Whova, if that makes sense. Okay. Yes. And I will just echo what Cami just said. She asked you all to leave this this zoom link and try it again in the hoover app did i say that right cammy they can go back to the hoover app it's been fixed and they will be able to access the chat in hoover correct um yes yeah, so you can log off this zoom um for attendees uh you all can log off this zoom um and then go back to the hoover app whether that's through your desktop or the mobile app and you should be able to work or, you know, uh, access the session through Whova. Awesome, it looks like it worked for Lindsay, so I'm glad. Thanks for your okay. patience, everybody. Yes. Um, I'm gonna give it a minute, Cammy, because I still have 21 participants here. Uh, so I'm just gonna say it again. Uh, some of you probably tried to get on through Whova and you were unable to do that when you initially click the link. Now it's working. And we're asking you all to leave this Zoom link and go over to Whova and access this session via Whova. That way you'll have access to the chat button and the Q&A button. I think Jennifer is coming back into the room. Okay. All right. I was now able to access through Hoover. So everybody can see who the Hoover button is working. So I am going to go ahead and get us started with this session. Now that I think everybody has successfully transitioned from the Zoom link back to Hoover, that way you can actually use the chat. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So again, the chat is for you to, to interact during this session today. The Q&A button or tab is where you will actually uh, put your questions that you have from the presenters today. So I am going to go ahead and introduce our presenters from the street captains uh, and get us started. So first up, we have Sinhu Sathis, and forgive me if I'm not pronouncing it correctly, um, but she is a public health professional from Sugar Land, Houston, Texas, and works for Access Health Community Health Center in the Population Health Department. As a part of the Community of Care Initiative, she coordinates the Reaching Richmond Community Collaborative to help improve factors of mental health and well-being in the Richmond, Texas area. She is currently pursuing her Master's of Public Health at the University of Texas Health Science Center in Houston 
and enjoys teaching dance and spending time in nature during her free time. I love it. Also here today, we have Regina Garza, uh, LMSW, and is a proud graduate of the graduate of the Graduate College of Social Work from the University of Houston. She is passionately serving the students and families of TL Pink Elementary to ensure their well-being and academic growth. Mrs. Garza especially enjoys developing and implementing parent and student initiatives to enrich their lives. She has worked with the pregnant and parenting teens with Lamar CISD as the parent educator and nonprofit Fort Bend in for youth as the youth director of programs. So again, welcome these two today and we look forward to your session. Thank you, Shabana. Shabana, we don't have the audio. So we're going to try that one more time. Everybody, my name is Regina Garza. I'm the social worker at the Title I El Pink Elementary School in Richmond, Texas. Uh, we're here with this wonderful people. Uh, I'm going to have everyone introduce themselves. And so we will start with Ms. Georgette. Uh, hi, my name is Jorge, and I am from the villa uh, in Richmond. I've been here for about nine years so far. Ms. Susan? Hi, my name is Susan Jackson. I uh, live at 1109 San Jacinto Avenue here in Richmond, Texas. I've uh, been a resident of Richmond for almost I want to say 20 years, so I guess I'm a die-hard Richmond, Texas. Die-hard Richmond, Texas. Yeah, here. And then my husband, he's been here longer than me, so married into it, so he's been here all his life. So I guess I'm. I guess you can say I'm a Richmond resident. Hi, my name is Maria Rodriguez. I'm at 1107 Alamo Avenue. Um, I'm lived here in Richmond since 20 years ago. Hi, I'm Sylvia Reyes and I live on Rochelle Street and I have been here, I've lived here uh, for 64 years. Hello, my name is Pat Halso. I've been living in, I live on Douglas Street and I've been here for 52 years. All right, so I just want to give everybody an overview on the initiative that we have here in Richmond. So our collaborative name, um, we're part of the Communities of Care Initiative and our collaborative is called Reaching Richmond. Our, our motto is to equip and power together. And so our collaborative consists um, of several different community organizations, local schools, um, health departments, and um, Access Health, which is uh, who I work for, which is a community health center. We all work together and we've been working together to find out our community priorities and what makes, um, what are the roots of mental health and well being in the North Richmond area. Over the last two years, we've discovered that our community priorities are number one, look, feel, and safety, number two, parks and open spaces, number three, what's sold and how it's promoted. And that's mainly when talking about foods and access to healthy foods. Number four, internet and Wi-Fi, which became very evident, especially during peak pandemic time when school and work was going virtual. And number five, arts and cultural expression. So this group of ladies, and there are several others that have gathered, um, we have started an initiative called the Street Captains. And they're basically leaders on their individual streets who, um, who give, provide information to their neighbors, 
and uh, kind of come together as a coalition to make better choices for our community. So as you can see in some of our pictures, this was a street captain's walk that we did a few months ago where we went down actually Miss Sylvia Street, we went down Rochelle Street together, we went door to door to all of the neighbors and we asked them about, you know, their experience living in North Richmond and just letting them know that, you know, we are the street captains in this area and we're here if they need anybody, if they need help and assistance, and just wanting to understand what are the priorities that they have in this community. And recently, just last week, we were in partnership with the Richmond Police Department to um, host National Night Out, and several of our street captains held a National Night Out on their block. Um, actually, all the street captains that are present are in these photos above as well, um, and they did a, a beautiful job. We had police officers that were out there, community members, and some really great discussions around community safety um, and just building better police and resident relationships. And so now we'll get started on asking our panelists some questions, so I'll pass it off to Ms. Garza. Okay, the very first question we have is, um, when do you and your family feel the healthiest? I can start. Um, when you ask the question, when do our, me and my family feel the healthiest uh, is when services are provided in an area that's reachable. I'm going to say that because uh, when it's unreachable, it's hard. Uh, I know living in Richmond, uh, most of the things that we have to I want to say partake that's like healthy um and i'm talking about like physical food wise it's something that we have to go out of our community for and i know that's something they've been talking about looking in, into making a community community garden uh eating healthier making better choices um uh, because when it's a need and you've got the family and you say okay i either think my family like at this time or provide something quick we usually go for the quick and not saying that it's always the healthy choice uh, so making something healthier would be uh, making things that are conducive for the community members closer at reach because a lot of the community members uh, um, because of where we live transportation is an issue so making it conducive for where we can get to the items uh, healthiness also means like exercising making more activity area where we can exercise i know we have an awesome uh park i'm glad now that we have the lighting so which the lighting has helped out a whole lot where we can partake with our families going and just doing the walking the physical exercise on that part i i guess i don't really have like as far as for my mom and i because i'm here to take care of her um because i do all the cookies so <laughs> which is probably good for her uh, she wasn't eating so well before and she is eating a lot better so um, i'm always happy to share any extra food with anybody that would like for me to cook for them or prepare something for them so i'm available to okay so we'll move on to the next question when do you and your family feel the safest i think that's a, a kind of a difficult question because of the pandemic um we try to be as safe as we can but uh there was no really criteria firm confirmed criteria of how to be your safe because wearing the mask was one thing but in the beginning it was even rough with that because technically we're not supposed to be breathing in air with pushing out but um i think um as they kind of more got a little handle on it, uh, the getting the vaccine, and I know there's, uh, you know, there are some people who don't believe in the vaccine, but uh, we still came together as a community, you know, um, and in in those situations uh, where we were in in company with people on both sides of that, we all wore masks. So I felt then that was probably like the safest part. Well, and for me, the, the time when I feel more safe is when my family or my children, my husband is here at home because with the news, with the COVID, um, everything 
made me scared about school safety, like you know, children and everything at schools. Also, where some people don't be um, I don't know what is the word in in English, but it's like um, consciente o que se cuide, que se cuiden para no contagiar a los demás. So people to be mindful so that they won't, you know, everyone else will be safe around them. So people will, if they would wear their mask and be mindful, then they will protect others as well as protect themselves. So I think the now the place more safe for me is at home. So it's on the weekends. We enjoy the weekends with my family here at home. Okay, we'll go to the next question. When do you feel the most connected to your neighbors and in your neighborhood? When do you feel most connected? Well, I, I, I think this initiative uh, started bringing us together. And, and I discussed this with Ms. Ms. Susan, and that, you know, sometimes we, we are um, kind of content where we are and things that are familiar, but the street captains uh, are causing us to step outside of places we don't normally, we are not normally. Like we just ride past there and whatever. But now uh, we're learning that there are so many people that, uh, you know, have a part of our community that, that you know, would be nice to, to just not pass by the street, but ride down and be like, hi, how you doing? <laughs> What's going on? Is there anything we can do? And I, I think that is, uh, the most amazing part of this initiative is us being able to come together and learn that, oh, we don't have to just go to work and come home and, and, and don't look at anybody, don't talk to anybody. Uh, to, to, to make this collaborative work is us actually coming together. And I, I thought that was very amazing. Well, what about like National Night Out? Was there anything about National Night Out and connecting, reconnecting with your neighbors? Okay, uh, like I said, I've been here 52 years. We have never done a national night out. And um, we've always felt uncomfortable in this area. But uh, that night, it was very, very nice. Now, we didn't get really a, a lot of people to come out because they were saying they were afraid. But hopefully next year, we'll get better. Like I said, it was our first time. And it was very nice. Uh, so we're going to work on it to do better next year. Mm, yeah. All right, Ms. Garza, do you want to take the next one? What factors contribute to you feeling connected to your neighborhood? Feel free if you want to um, repeat the question in Spanish for Ms. Rodriguez. And Ms. Rodriguez, if you feel more comfortable answering in Spanish, that's totally fine. ¿Qué factores contribuyen a tu, a tu conexión con tu comunidad? What factors contribute to your feeling connected to your neighbors in your neighborhood? I think the National Night Out was really instrumental uh, over here uh, at the Villa because people came out and the fact that the officers were there and it was really uh really cute that one of the kids were like uh what what is this for why are this and i was like well you know the whole thing is it was the officers event and it was a community thing so that you know you could feel more comfortable with talking with an officer if you had a question or there was a need for something and you would have to fear uh anything except for if you were doing something you have to <laughs> you know out, out of the uh ordinary or i mean not really you know that you're not supposed to so and it was really nice because they the officer were there and they were all laughing and, and, and engaging with everyone so i felt that 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 brought more people together because the little girl left and brought back her friends <laughs> so I thought that that was really inspirational as far as reaching our goal of 
bringing people together. I go to the next question. Um, how does safety impact, and this can be your child or just children in the community, but how does safety impact your ch child's mental well-being? I don't have a child, but I understand that uh, feeling safe uh, is, is something that we all need, whether we are adults or children. And being comfortable being around other people and getting to know them is a way to make you feel safer in your own community. Because if you're always feeling like, oh, I can't walk down that street, I can't go here, then we develop these, uh, it, hmm, I would want to say insecurities or pet peeves about, well, I was always told to avoid this, but don't go there. When, when we come together, we realize it's really sometimes not a place to be feared. It's just to be mindful of the, the people who you speak to or what what are you doing there? What are you engaging in at the time? So I think um, as far as children, that's what we should be teaching them to get to know people uh, and not kind of like stereotyping, well, okay, this, this is the bad area. Any area can be pulled up if we come together. I'm going to say the question in Spanish now. ¿Cómo impacta la seguridad del bienestar de tus hijos? Para mí, la, la seguridad de mis hijos es muy importante, sobre todo si tienen que caminar a la, a la estación del autobús. En primer lugar, que a veces andan los perros sueltos, y eso me preocupa. Otra, en que muchos padres van tarde con los niños y no respetan las velocidades o no respetan los los staff o que están los niños y eso da pendiente entonces es mejor en mí mejor llevarlos yo y traerlos yo entonces ahorita eso espero que las reuniones que estamos teniendo este ayuden a mejorar todo eso para los niños que van creciendo y que están empezando a, a vivir en este, en este, en este pueblo de Richmond. Ms. Rodriguez mentioned that the safety of her children is very important to her because it impacts her well-being. And so in order to provide that security and that safety for her children and to maintain their mental well-being is um, taking them to and from school because at the bus stop, it is not safe. Uh, there's many stray dogs that are not, um, you know, that are very, can be very, can be dangerous possibly. So, and then people are not mindful of being conscious of respecting the stop signs and things like that. So if their children are at the stop sign waiting for the bus, she's afraid that there may be an accident, you know, so she just, prefers to take the children to and from school to protect their and maintain their well-being. Okay, what I would like to say that's about the safety, uh, what I would like to see in our neighborhood is more signs. I don't have small kids, but I do have my grandchildren and there are, there are other children in the area. More signs like cautious, uh, children playing, you know, slow down, uh, but not only in my neighborhood, in the whole neighborhood of north side of Richmond, because you don't see those any signs like that. And, you know, there is a lot of little kids, you know, riding their bikes or walking or running. And that's what I would like to see more on this north side of Richmond, more safety signs and maybe speed signs. So we were just joined by an additional street captain, Ms. Gloria. So I'm going to give her a chance to introduce herself. Hello, my name is Gloria Masariego, um, street captain at uh, two, on Douglas Street in Richmond. And I'm, I'm happy and, and joyful to be joining this group. Thank you all for that. So I'm going to proceed to the next question, and Ms. Gloria, feel free to, you know, to answer. So I know it's only been a few months 
since we have started the Street Captains Initiative. We started sometime, I think, in early summer, maybe summertime. So in the past few months, I'd love for everybody to take some time to answer, but what have you already learned from this experience? How has it been different for you? Um, some of you guys have lived here for several years, but how has this experience been um, for you so far? Um, it's been to join and to be a part of, it's been exciting and, um, Yes, I love to meet my neighbors and and also ask them, you know, if there's anything that we could write down and help be helpful to them, to the community, especially here down Douglas Street, they're uh, more elderly men. And, you know, we could reach out to them and give them information like where they could get help and probably feeding them and probably uh, helping with their bills. I don't know. I know two of them are single men, like elderly. Miss Pat Hostel also knows them, you know, and I try to reach out to them and, and to see a smile when you go and visit them or reach out to them, you know, to bring them a warm plate of food or a hot taquito, you know, they, they, that smile says it all. They don't have to say anything. But yes, I'm blessed and I thank y'all for giving me the opportunity to help. And it's 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 helping me, you know, to learn a lot of, of our community that we live here. I lived here since I was eleven. I started living in Freemantown and, and since I I think I was I can't remember how old I was starting to live on this side. But yes, we need to reach out, reach out and help also, you know, our kids to motivate them. And thank y'all for helping with so many things that we've asked, especially the teenagers, you know, that the, they're our next generation that they are next leaders. Would anybody else like to also answer that question on how their experience has been? In comment, I've learned, uh, I've been, like I said, I've been here uh, 20 years and then my husband's been here 30. Um, I've learned a lot of uh, because of the position that I have uh, working at Prince of North Richmond, and that's something that we deal a lot with the community members and also uh, partnering with different um, nonprofits and a uh, lot. And then uh, the information that I've learned, uh, the key thing that I found out is, uh, is sharing it uh, with people in the community and also uh, other church members because uh, I've been a church member uh, my husband's a pastor for over 21 years, and a lot of the information that I have learned, uh, the churches don't know. Uh, kind of sad to say, but they don't. Um, and I think that's uh, empowering me to be more of an advocate to talk to uh, the community members, the church members, to, uh, to get out more, to learn, because uh, I feel that the more people that come together to learn more, uh, the, the places that we live and what we want better for the next generation is going to be better, but you can't do anything by being silent. So uh, I've learned that part about um, edu educating and, and, and talking and actually not just doing all the talking, but actually uh, learning to listen, listen to what the community has to say. I'm going to go to the next question. What do you hope to gain from being a community leader? I think the biggest thing that we can hope for is for us to have a, a community that comes together where we are familiar with each other and we are aware of the needs and, and coming together to uh, make these things possible that we have a, a quality of life uh, that it should be afforded to all of us who live here and and be and feel the safety and the health and all of that uh, by knowing that we are all working towards the same goal and that is for us to have an inclusive community where we are taking care of one another usted quiere ganar en esta experiencia de ser un líder en la comunidad 
eh, yo quisiera poder ganar en el, eh, por todas las personas que estamos hablando, que lleguen a escuchar nuestras voces y que puedan ayudarnos a, a mejorar todas las necesidades que de una manera u otra todos tenemos. Y, y sobre todo, um, formar parte de, de un equipo importante que logró hacer algo por Richmond. Ella dice que she hopes to gain uh, the strong relationships with her community members and that together they can change the way they live for the better, you know, quality of life, working towards that goal together. And she loves that, you know, they're moving towards that because they're already forming that relationship. So as a leader, she hopes that she can continue to do that, you know. And so Maria, I have to say you're doing a good job with your, as a street captain in your, in your neighborhood. Thank you, Maria. I should say thank all of y'all because you're all doing that. <laughs> I am curious to know about um, your connections with the police department. Back in May, I believe we had a collaborative meeting where the police department came out. We were able to meet a couple of them. And since then, they've been involved in a few of our initiatives, like our street walk and last week during our national night out. Um, how have those, how has that relationship building been? How has it surprised you? Um, just Speak to me a little bit about those police relationships. In person, I'm very happy because that day we walked together, Miss Indu. I'm very surprised about the, the officer. I'm very identified with him because he was very uh, polite. And he enjoyed talk with the, the neighbors. And also, I want to speak very well English for can do that. And also, the officer who come for the national night out, I can pronounce his name, but he called me. He called me and he um, told me what he is doing and also what I need. And also um, he called me like three or four times. And I'm very, you know, happy to receive the call, like a friendly call from the police department. And also he was very nice, very like, like any person, no, he's like an officer, you know, like, like some officer feel like, I don't know what is the name, but like different than like you, no? Like you need to respect them and something like that. And this officer, he, he was very nice. And also he enjoyed the pizza. He's talking with the neighbors, you know? You feel very good with him. I don't know, I'm a enjoy and I'm, you know, the opinion like you have sometimes for the officers and you knew this officer, it changed a lot. It's like they are like any person and also they enjoy to talk with us. I feel like he enjoy it with, uh, at all with us. I don't know, this is my opinion. And I'm enjoy, I'm very, I am feel very special to, to be like his friend, <laughs> like that. <laughs> Great answer, Ms. Rodriguez. I agree with what she said because it it did it did seem like they made an effort to to get out and mingle and to uh, bring about what the whole message of their coming out is that that they're he dare to be part of the community uh, as well as keep us safe. And um, they they were very friendly, you know, and they they talked to a lot. And 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 I think in my picture, my officer did 
to bunny me in behind. He was like, guess what I did behind your head? So it was fun. And they, they were, you could see them as people, not just authority figures. So yes, that was, that was very uh, a pleasant surprise. We had a lot of the kids here uh, in the neighborhood say how, you know, how nice they were. It wasn't that, you know, like they weren't afraid of them, you know, yet they respected them. So I think that's really important too, is uh, for them to be able to communicate with them, uh, with, with anybody, you know, but especially with the younger uh, kids that were around because they were really nice with them. I mean, you know, I sometimes kids see things on TV that um, that are different than what you actually see, you know, face to face. Thank you. We enjoyed uh, here on Douglas Street. We enjoyed two of the officers, and they were uh, they had said I think William had said he was going to be going and coming. But no, he ended up staying. We had Hello. Officer Williams and Officer Chris Westheimer. I forget how to pronounce his last. <laughs> so, uh, Mr. Chris, they were so nice. They answered questions. They were talking to some of the kids also. And and one gentleman came down from the mobile home. You know, nobody else wanted to come out from that area. There, I, I feel they are afraid because uh, I just remember recently somebody uh, of the family member down the street had a, 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 an altercation in Rosenberg, but that's what came to my mind afterwards. I said, maybe something like that, you know, that they're afraid. But the officer said, no, don't be afraid. And, and he told the gentleman I translated and told him what the officer was saying to take that back over there to the neighbors, his neighbors, then not to be afraid to reach out and because the officers want to be there for, for the community. And if something gets stolen or he sees somebody out of place, the beat officer, they know who lives in the area. So he told them, yeah, we're here to help. We're not here to scare or do anything wrong to the, the community out here. And thank you all. Yes, we enjoyed pizza. We enjoyed, we had balloons out there. I love balloons. And we enjoyed it. Thank you, Miss Sindhu, for sitting down and, and eating the sandwich. And that, that yes, that makes us feel comfortable when they, they humble themselves to us. You know, they're not just here, hey, here's my gun, I'm this, I'm that. No, they sit down and they communicate, they, they talk to us, you know, like Miss Maria was saying, it, they're humble. They, they, son humildes y, y están con nosotros, they're with us. They sit down with us and they're they're communicating with us, you know, not just about authority. No es nomás la autoridad de ellos, es que también se sientan al nivel de nosotros. They're at our level. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, just like Gloria said, Officer Williams and Westheimer, uh, also the co commissioner showed up, which I've heard a lot about him, but I've never put his name with the face. Uh, the chief of police showed up. I also knew him by name, but not by his face. Uh, we had a great time. The children, they loved it. The officers had their lights on and sirens, and the kids were talking on the microphone. And I mean, I even had someone text me and say, hey, Pat, is everything all right over there? <laughs> and it's like I said, we've, I've been here 52 years, and we've never had anything like this. So I really enjoyed it. And like I told Gloria, we're going to work on something bigger next year. And uh, the officers were very, very nice to the kids. They felt very comfortable, uh, even us adults. And I want to thank them for the pizza and thank y'all, you know, for everything y'all do. And like I said, we're going to work on this to get better, especially in our neighborhood, the whole community of Northside. We're going to work on this and do our best to bring up our neighborhood over here on this side of the tracks. Thank you. The last question, what are some other priorities for us to make our neighborhood safer and more connected? We've done a lot of work around safety and we'll continue to do more work around safety and, and 
building those relationships. But I know you guys have talked about other priorities and what are some further things in the future as street captains, as a community collaborative that you would like to see be done? I think we're on track with what we're doing here. It's just a, it's a process and, and it doesn't happen overnight, but this is what we're doing is what's going to lead us to a goal. We just have to continue to do this and just find more events to bring us together than dividing us. So, you know, so I, I think that um, we had a great start. It was amazing. And they let, they made us feel like they were part of the community, the officers that, themselves. And uh, we were more, felt more inclusive. Like, yes, that, that there was hope for something different because now we, we know we don't have to fear the officers. And as long as we uh, let, make them feel like they are part of the community as long as, as, long as they're, they're working, then I think we will be a community because every time they come to work, they know that they are part of this community and that will help with our safety issues. And we will work on the other things as we move along because this this was just uh, after so many times of talking, it went really well. So I, I, I think that moving forward, we, we can only see better things happen because each person on this panel has said how excited they are to to keep this going and to have this community that we are talking about so it's a work in progress so all we have to do is keep doing it and bring our, our minds together to find different events to make that happen anyone else does everyone feel the same or anyone want to add to that cosas, otras metas que quieres que tu comunidad se sienta más seguro en cómo, qué manera o más conexión con tu comunidad. Otras maneras, otras metas. Yo siento que vamos por buen camino más que nada ahora que eh, tuvimos la caminata en la calle con los vecinos que pudimos interactuar un poco con ellos, informarlos un poco de lo que estamos haciendo. Me gustaría, de verdad, este, y confío en que hayamos tocado un poquito la conciencia de todos en, en tratar de hacer algo y no nada más mandar nuestros hijos a la escuela y creer que allá no los educan o en nada más este salir de casa, regresar a casa y cerrar las puertas y no saber qué está pasando alrededor y que es súper importante también darte cuenta qué está pasando alrededor y igual también poder hacer algo, no tener miedo si vemos que está pasando algo una injusticia, digámoslo así un asalto y están enfrente de tu casa que no tuvieras miedo de llamar a la policía um, me gustaría igual también que si ven que va un niño solo y no ven que va nadie con él, que pienses, ¿verdad?, en poderlo ayudar. Y siento yo que es lo mismo a que la gente esté mirando, por ejemplo, que si las luces de las calles no son suficientes, pero no dicen nada. O que si los autobuses están recogiendo los niños del otro lado, y que los niños se están cruzando la carretera, es peligroso para los niños, aunque no sean tus hijos, y que tú puedas llamar a, a, a la oficina de los autobuses y decir, eso es lo que yo quisiera poder, que la gente fuera un poquito más consciente y que no nada más viviera en su propio mundo, que se uniera a nosotros y pudiéramos hacer cosas mucho mejores juntos. Ms. Rodriguez was sharing that she would like for her community to be more strong in supporting one another with the safety in the neighborhood. For instance, if there's a concern in the with the neighbors regarding safety, any kind of concern, to feel free to call the police or to say, hey, you know, I see that you're struggling with that. Can I help you with that? 
Um, also, there's children playing in the street and there's cars passing by, or if the child looks like he needs help with something, you know, for the neighbors to feel free, hey, can I help you with that? Or do you feel safe? How can I help you feel safe? Um, when the children are getting off the bus and they're crossing the street, and if someone was witnessing that they may need help, you know, ensure their safety, to step in and, and, and help with that so that the children will be safe crossing the street when they're getting off the bus. So that's her priority is to help neighbors feel comfortable and empowered to help with the safety of the children. And that, that's what she hopes to do. Jackson, I know you had unmuted before. Do you want to close us off? Any additional priorities or other things you'd like to achieve apart from what we've already done and kind of the direction we're going? Um, my goal is, um, since we started with the street captains, uh, I know that's a start and it's a good start. Uh, but if we all, because I know we're all committed uh, in making a change for the betterment of rich, I know I am, and I can speak for myself. And I think it's, uh, as, as long as we're getting empowered and then empowering the people along the way, because uh, I always think about the next generation to come. And it took me back to the conversation that I had with my daughter. And um, I've been in Richmond all my life and I know it's a good area. I love Richmond or, or the, otherwise. Most people that I've listened to in the community, listen, the, the residents are here because they want to be here. They're not here because of, because of cross the tracks. They really do love the area that they live in. And so to advocate for that, uh, I think we need to uh, start imparting that in the younger generation. That's what I see lacking in. Um, I see the seniors. The seniors are committed. My age group, which is the 40, 50, are committed. But that other age bracket, we're kind of losing them. So that's where I'm coming in to advocate for uh, that generation because that's our next police officers. That's our next judges. That's our, you know, that's our next future. So that's where I'm going to uh, advocate in, in that. That's one thing I miss in who you know, my daughter. Uh, my daughter is an advocate. She, but getting her to advocate more with her peers, with that, that group, because I see they're lacking on that part. So that's my, uh, my goal for the street captain is to get more of them involved in coming alongside with us for the betterment of Richmond. I have to say a lot of our street captains do have children and they do attend Pink Elementary School. And even though they're as young as eight years old, I see that they're, are seeing the example of their parents being involved as street captains, and they are loving it. They are being involved by helping passing out the flyers and, and saying hello and, and saying a little bit about what they're doing with their mom or their dad. And I feel hopeful that that generation is going to be the leaders and they're going to change Richmond, that part of town, because they're getting the example from their parents, and then they're also getting educated at Pink with the Health Squad Initiative, which is a different initiative, but it's part of the street captain. Um, and I grew up in that part of town in Richmond, and we didn't have this growing up. And now I'm giving back by working with you all and also with Pink Elementary School. So I love that I'm part of this. I have pride in what we're doing. I love that we have this initiative because it's something that needs to happen and it needs to change. And it is already doing that through you all. So I love this. All right. um, this has been awesome. I'm just gonna take a moment to close us out. I wanna thank all of the panelists that are here today. Wonderful, wonderful women street captains. Um, it has been such an honor to get to know all these ladies over the last year and to do this work together. We started virtually for almost over a year, figuring out the priorities of our community, having long, long discussions about the history of North Richmond and kind of how we've gotten to where we are. And to, to, to finally put those things into action and to see the bigger picture is really wonderful. And I love hearing about your experiences. I, of course, want to give a major shout out to Ms. Garza for helping to lead this panel and also just helping to lead this work. We've all become 
it's so funny. I didn't know everybody a year and a half ago, but now these are some of my favorite women in this community that I can just roll up over to their house or over to their job and have a good conversation with everyone. And um, this is this has really been great. And it's, it's been a blessing watching this community grow stronger and especially with those uh, relationships with the police and with one another. So we'd like to thank the, the Hogg Foundation and Prevention Institute for all of their help and support and advice in um, moving our street captains model forward. We hope that we've inspired other communities, other neighborhoods to possibly start something, um, something similar. So thank you all, enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you. That was amazing. <laughs> and to, to the panelists, we just want to thank you tremendously. So Nzinga, do you want to start us off with questions? I know we're running a little bit late, but we have some awesome questions here in, in the Q&A. Yes. Uh, let me get that back over here. I was already heading to the, my. I got a session that starts in four minutes. Um, let me see. <laughs> uh, that is so odd. Okay. Can you see the Q&A questions, Sheila? Because I cannot. Okay. Go ahead and, and take over. <laughs> can't hear you. We can't hear you. I heard you a minute ago. Zoom tech. Please unmute Sheila. There, there we go. We go. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you, Sheila. <laughs> no, thank you. And thank you to the panel and Reaching Richmond. What awesome work. There's a lot of interest in street captains. Um, the first question was, um, how did you recruit your block captains and do they have a term that they serve for and would you be willing to share their job descriptions with others? And Regina or Sindhu? Do you want to take that? Yeah. Okay. Well, I can give I can give a little bit of background if everyone can hear me. Um, so the, the recruitment of street captains really happened uh, pretty much like within our not our, you know, community collaborative organizations, and it's kind of letting everybody know, hey, we're about to begin this initiative. If there are, you know, uh, I guess members of your organization that attend, we have several different either nonprofits or the PTO parents or, you know, from the local health department, if there are individuals that you believe like would would really um, appreciate being part of this initiative or you know, benefit from doing something like this or are just looking for an avenue to assist their community and assist their neighbors, you know, uh, please give them this information. And um, we held orientations both in English and in Spanish at our local, uh, one of our, our partners, Miss Neri, she just held it, it was several months ago, we did it outside in her front patio where Miss nice. Garza led an entire orientation for street captains. And um, yeah, that's, that's really how it's how it started. And I, I feel like growing forward is really the street captains kind of talking about it amongst the neighborhood. And, you know, especially National Night Out, a lot of people came to learn about it and they were like, Oh, that's cool. Like, how do I get involved? How can I support my street captain and things like that? So, and I have to say also, when we did meet at the orientation, we allowed the street captains to take ownership. So they came up with the motto and uh, the our saying, which is empower uh, together, a quick empower together. I believe that's what it is. And so we wanted them to come up with, you know, the mission. And, and I think that's what says a lot about them, that they are the ones leading this community community initiative. So yeah, that's how we recruited all of them. And, and I love that they're leading this. Yeah, amazing. Um, 
I think to to either of the street captains, how did it feel to be recruited for this kind of role? <laughs> I can uh, say that um, I was kind of, it was my daughter that was actually the street captain, but due to her uh, job and um, the responsibilities that she had, I kind of like took the the initiative to start it. And then uh, next thing I know, I was the street captain. <laughs> <laughs> Recruited by family. <laughs> That's a good thing. Yes. There's another question here. Are you all thinking about adding more street captains? And I know, Sindhu, you mentioned uh, that uh, people at the National Night Out said they wanted to support, they wanted to get involved. Can you tell us a little more about that? Or Sure. And I mean, you know, with COVID being just a thing in general, it's, of course, there's just been a lot of bumps in the road and being able to kind of have like a smooth, like a smooth set of events to be like really consistent in, you know, our engagement with the community. Recently, we, um, some of our collaborative leaders, we all met together to do like a strategic planning of like, hey, for street captains moving forward, what can we do every month? What is at least one thing we can do per month? Um, and I think that will help to get the word out. And I don't want to say it's necessarily just like a pilot phase, but we are, you know, we're still growing what we're doing. We're still changing, taking ideas from the street captains, from, you know, local community members on what they'd like to see. So during National Night Out, if you guys heard Miss Rodriguez, especially at the one that she hosted, um, she just straight up asked her neighbors, like, as a street captain, what is something that I could help lead for our neighborhood that like you would like to see be done. And if anything, neighbors have just never really been asked that question. So they really appreciated um, that. Ms. Georgia, Ms. Susan, is there anything you'd like to add to that? I, it was a pleasure to be part of the, the Street Captains Initiative because of the implication that we would all have an inclusive community where we, we from this uh time we realized we we really didn't know everybody like we could have uh and until the street captains thing came along and it is very promising as far as to what we see for our future and how uh we can uh look after one another and our times of needs are just being there for uh, our community Well, I, I just definitely want to thank you. Um, thank you. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I think that's my, my echo back. <laughs> um, but <laughs> thank you all. Definitely. This is um, a beautiful model that, that just your inspiring words and the kind of ways it reflects uh, pride in the community and promise, you know, of what community safety can look like, what community unity can be about. Um, what we'll do is also add resources. The good thing about Hoover is we can add some resources to the link associated with this session. And so um, anything more that you'd like to share about the street captain's work, um, we can definitely add that and it'll be available to the participants for, for six months. So um, just want to commend you all for your work. I am, I have, you know, I have instructions from the coordinating team. Um, in the chat, you should see, oh, let's see. You will see a link to a form that is our evaluation. And um, at least I hope it went in there. <laughs> and, um, and that way you can also give us feedback on this session and on the conference as a whole. We definitely look forward to seeing this uh, continue to blossom. Uh, I have no doubt. Uh, that it'll continue to grow. And I want to thank the panelists. I want to thank Reaching Richmond and, uh, and thank all the participants that stayed and, and had such tremendous interest in this work. 
I think next we'll take a, we have a little bit of a break where the DJ is going to take over and then there's a, a additional sessions that'll start. Um, I think in about five to 10 minutes. So again, join me in thanking everyone and uh, be sure that you follow the links if you are getting your CEUs and make sure that you have followed those instructions and we appreciate uh, the message. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.